I'm Nancy Levenger. I'm from Colorado State University and I'm here to tell you about. So, you have an interview. Now what? So, preparing for your interview process, uh, we really want to talk today about what to expect, what you want to prepare, but most of all, how to make this really count. Your application gets you the interview. But once you get the interview, things go back to zero, really, and it's up to you to make that interview really count to get the job. The first thing that I realized when I started to think about talking to you about this is that whenever I have a, a student who's interested in a faculty position, I always tell them to find a buddy. And sometimes I actually have them find a buddy, I actually help, help them to find a buddy myself. You really want to rely on your mentors, your thesis advisor, your postdoc advisor, those kinds of people who have been important in your, in your life. They can be really useful for you in terms of helping you to figure out how to prepare for your job. But even more important, probably, is to find peers, people who have recently gone through this process, who know what it's like, who can tell you about things firsthand about what they experienced when they went out and they interviewed for a job. Those people are going to be the ones who can really help to answer questions and calm your nerves about the, uh, the interview process. You undoubtedly will have a contact person at the place that you're interviewing. And this is a person that you should feel comfortable asking questions of because they're the ones who are calling the shots about things. They know what's going on. They're the ones who are organizing the, the interview as well. And bottom line, if you have questions, ask. Don't be shy. This is your chance, so. so what are the goals of an interviewing department? Well, we want to find, hire, and retain excellent faculty members. We want people who are even better than we are. That's what we really want to be able to do. Interviewing people for jobs is expensive. So realize that we're putting an investment into interviewing you for this job and we have high expectations for how you're going to interview okay so let's talk a little bit about different kinds of interviews uh, there are generally speaking two different kinds of interviews that you can have at an academic in institution because there are two different kinds of academic institutions I have a faculty job at a research-oriented university and so I'm very intimate with the what happens in that interview process Usually the interview, the on-campus interview is between a day and a half and two days. You'll have meetings with individual faculty members that are anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. If they're 30 minutes, you'll always run late because that's really not enough time for them. Uh, you'll almost always have um, a meeting with the dean of the college and you'll definitely have an, inter an interview or an opportunity to talk to the department chair. And part of the time that you're talking to the department chair is for you to be able to communicate what you're going to need to be able to set up the research program that we expect you to set up. Um, so you should prepare a rough budget of how much money you're thinking about. You don't have to be precise in this. We don't want to see how many, uh, how many grams of a particular chemical you need to buy in order to be able to start your, your program. But we do want to have broad, a broad idea of how much money you think it's going to cost. And sometimes, oftentimes, you're going to meet students. If you go out, um, if you visit Colorado State University on an interview trip, you're always going to have lunch with students. Our reason for doing that is we want to be able to show you what kinds of students we get at Colorado State. So we're trying to recruit you to come to our, our department. There will be presentations by you. A seminar about your research that you've already performed. Sometimes that will be um, a combination of both your graduate work and your postdoctoral work. Sometimes it might just be about your postdoctoral work if that's the stuff that you're most excited about. But it's generally speaking uh, um, about the things that you've already accomplished. And then there's this proposed research seminar that you have to give. That's all about the things that you're thinking about. What you want to actually do if you were to become a faculty member if you were to become my colleague. In addition, it's not just the times that you're actually on campus with things, but meals are a part of your interview. 
So you really want to pay attention to what you're doing. Some people say, don't ever drink alcohol on a, on a faculty interview. Well, probably you could have a beer or a glass of wine, especially if the other people are around there and that's what you usually do. Don't do it if you don't usually drink. Um, but um, you want to avoid things like messy foods, um, really things like barbecue that you would maybe get all over yourself. Don't go for those kinds of foods. And sometimes, even at a research-oriented institution, there's going to be a phone or a Skype interview. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The interview at a primarily undergraduate institution is pretty similar. It's not that much different. Lots of times, almost all the time, it starts with a phone or an online interview. And this can be a, a situation where you're um, with uh, like three to five faculty members. It could be even more, but it's a screening process that happens. And in fact, more and more research-oriented universities are going, um, are going to a model where we use a phone interview just to be able to screen down the, uh, the candidates that we have. The on-site interview will have, again, meetings with individual faculty members, probably 30 to 60 minutes. Sometimes these faculty members might not come from a chemistry department. They might be from another science department because, because they don't have that many faculty in the chemistry department and they want to get, give you an idea of who else is at that college. You'll talk to the dean of the college or maybe the provost. You will always talk to the department chair. And again, you're going to want to prepare a rough budget of what kinds of financial resources you would need to be able to, to set up the program that you want to do at that school. And you for sure are going to have interactions with undergraduate students there. You're going to give presentations. Um, always something about the research that you've been doing and lots of times this presentation is also to try to see how well you teach because what we want to be able to see is how well are you able to explain what you're doing and how engaging is your description of your own research to the students who are in the room there may be a, an opportunity for you to talk about your proposed research that might come in the same time as you're talking about what you have done in your research and oftentimes you're given an opportunity to teach either a real course or a pretend course in front of a bunch of faculty members, which can be disconcerting. Lots of times you'll be given the opportunity to prepare either a lecture of what you would do in a, um, in a classroom that's of your choice or a particular topic that they want to be able to see you teach. So preparing your presentations, there's always going to be the what I've been doing talk. And we're really used to giving these kinds of talks because this is what we talk about all the time. You become an expert at what you do. Your research, you're the best at it in the, in the world because that's what you're doing. So um, that's a pretty straightforward thing to, to do. At a research-oriented university, there's the what I'm going to do talk, right? And that is um, a talk where you're presenting the ideas about what you want to do, what you would set up as a um, research program at the institution that you're going to go to. At Colorado State, we um, budget an hour and a half for those kinds of talks. And almost always, the person starts talking in these talks and um, they get interrupted within the first 10 to 15 minutes. You actually really want to get interrupted in the first 10 to 15 minutes because that means that people are paying attention and they're interested in what you're proposing to do. It's almost kind of like your oral exam again because people are going to ask you questions about how are you going to do this? And how is this going to work? And maybe you don't know the answer to everything. If you um, need time to think about what it is that you're, uh, they're asking, it's always fine, just like in your oral exam, to say, I think you're asking this. Is that, is that right? So that you actually know exactly what they're talking about when they're asking you a question. And at a primarily undergraduate institution, there's going to be the I'll be a fabulous teacher opportunity. And that will be something like teaching a course to um, either a group of faculty members, maybe a group of students, maybe it's an actual course. Maybe they've given you the option of what you prepare for the course. Maybe they are telling you what they want you to prepare for. In all cases, know your audience. It is going to be a, a very unusual situation for you to be talking to exactly the people who know what you're doing. 
So you don't want to use acronyms, or at least if you use them, you want to be able to make sure that you're defining them. Because when you give a talk, if you're a synthetic organic chemist, you're probably talking to physical chemists, analytical chemists, inorganic chemists, environmental chemists. You don't know who's, you don't know who's in your audience. It's usually a very broad audience, and it's better to make sure that everybody follows along than that you're talking in really detail to the few people in the room who might know what you're doing. Practice, 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 right? That's how you get to Carnegie Hall, and that's also how you get a job. Um, you wanna make sure that your, your performance is, um, that you know what's in your slides and that your performance is practiced and it's smooth. Um, the more polished, the better, but you don't wanna sound like this is a speech that you um, only know the certain words for it. There has to be a certain amount of extemporaneousness to it. Um, let's see, what else? Know what they are expecting. These days, virtually everything is a PowerPoint, a, um, a computer-based presentation. Know what kinds of things are available there and what, they, um, what they're expecting there, and always have a backup on some other kind of media. You wanna have either a flash drive or, or something so that in case something else happens, you still can give your presentation. Don't try new technology. Maybe there's a really groovy new way of doing something, some kind of a polling system, but you haven't ever tried it before. Your talk at an interview is not the time to try this out. Um, you want to make sure that you feel totally comfortable with how to make sure how to make your um, talk count here. Know how long they expect you to talk. Um, you don't want to talk for an hour when they think you're going to talk for 45 minutes. You definitely want to make sure that in the time frame that they have budgeted for your talk, that there is enough time for questions to be asked because people are going to want to ask questions about things and if you run over them, they can't ask those questions. People will be frustrated. And know what kind of media are available. Can you bring your laptop? Um, will they have a projector? Do they have a, um, do they have a pointer for you? Do they have a slide advancer or those kinds of things that you want to be able to use? Or are they expecting for you to actually use a computer that's there with a flash drive in order to be able to um, uh, do this? And if you're not sure, ask. This is probably the most important thing that you can do. Always ask, don't assume.